this point, we shall begin with discussing another topic in the uh, science, technology, and society, particularly the lecture 13, which is the information age. So, at the end of the lesson, uh, you should be able to first define information age, second, discuss the history of the information age, and third, understand the factor that needs to be considered in checking websites and sources. Now, let's talk about the information age. When we say information age, uh, we are referring to uh, information, of course, which is data-driven, uh, highly modernized. It is something to do with automation or automated, technologically advanced. So it has something to do with devices, with all the telecommunication devices such as cell phone, gadgets, and so on and so forth. Now, so when we say information, according to Webster Encyclopedic uh, Dictionary, no, it is a knowledge communicated or obtained concerning a specific fact or circumstance. So now let's talk about the information age, of course. So when we say information age, it starts in the last quarter of the 20th century when information became accessible through publication. Uh, so, dito na yung uh, digital age, new media age, and these are associated with the development of computers or any telecommunication devices that transfers of information. And of course, it was uh, also the time of the introduction of the theory of the information age by James R. Messenger. So, when we say theory of information of age, of course, uh, it pertains to uh, true new age wherein uh, information was already validated. Okay? All informations are given to all people. It is all accessible to every individual. Okay? So when we say uh, Theory of information is something to do with interconnection of computers via tele telecommunication. So take note class that computers contains data and of course through telecommunication, of course this data is being transferred from one uh, computer to another. Of course using the internet connection, right? So it has something since uh, we are already adapted to kind to this kind of uh, situation, it became convenient and user friendly, and it is uh, it has something to do with uh, user dependence. We're in we are already dependent in using these devices for us to acquire information. Now let's backtrack how information has had emerged from time to time okay so of course during the 300 uh, bc the cuneiform was uh, discovered okay, it was already introduced by the ancient civilization as well as of course the hieroglyphics and these uh, cuneiforms and hieroglyphics contains data it contains when we say data it contains information about the past it contains a story behind how people live during that time now of course during the 1300 bc tortoise shell and or oracle bone was introduced so as uh, archaeologists continues to dwell on searching other artifacts nakikita nila that people before were using uh, bone writing just like presented here for them to put information or for them to store information and of course during the 500 BC papyrus roll was used already and this paper as as, as paper is being introduced to the community it was the emergence it was used in order to course write down information and of course this information uh, will be stored and be uh, utilized by other people in order to be informed of course now 
Of course, during the uh, 220 BC, Chinese small seal uh, writing was developed. And of course, these forms of writing made by the Chinese uh, civilization was very uh, was essential in communicating informations during their time. And of course, during 100 AD, of course, dito na nangyari yung parang uh, pag-create ng uh, book, okay? yung codex, di ba? During, uh, it was the time of the, uh, it was the time of the Roman, if I'm not mistaken, Roman uh, contribution wherein they are able to introduce the codex na dito uh, naging foundation yung pag-create ng mga libro natin. At since uh, nag-start na, na yung pag-create ng libro, pag-compile pag ng lahat ng information sa libro, dito na nagkaroon ng, uh, of course, pagdami ng information, pag-store ng information, pagbabasa ng mga tao for uh, people to be informed of what is present in their surroundings. Of course, during the 105 AD, uh, wood block printing and paper was invented by the Chinese. And uh, this wood block was uh, one of uh, the ways of China, of his, one of the ways of how Chinese store information, diba? And uh, this is how they uh, store uh, relevant information during their times. And uh, of course, during in the year in in the year uh, 1455, Johann Gutenberg invented the, the printing press using uh, a movable metal type. So as mentioned during our previous discussion, uh, the invention of the printing press was one of the remarkable uh, uh, remarkable contributions to science technology because uh, this was the time of uh, of the development, of course, the, the overproductions of information. Di ba mas madali na lang kasing uh, mag-spread yung information kasi mas madali na lang mag-reproduce ng mga libro or ng mga bababasahing materials. And of course, noong 1755, Samuel Johnson's dictionary was established already. It was the standardized English spelling book or dictionary wherein uh, it was the foundation. It became the foundation of the language uh, lit uh, literacy for the other people during that time. Okay, so in 18, 18 two, or yes, eighteen two, the library of the Congress was established. Okay, and uh, it was the invention of the carbon arc lamp. So since they are able to uh, they are able to collect already the information. Information was already been uh, printed sa mga libro. And saan ba nila lalagay itong mga librong ito? Of course, it should be placed in one location named library. So ito na yung parang uh, una an established library. And of course, a library it, during that time, hindi pa naman masyadong uh, hindi pa uh, nag-create ng electricity. So, dito na nagkaroon yung uh, tinatawag natin carbon arc lamp. Na itong carbon arc lamp na to, it was used by readers in order to, of course, mailawan yung kanilang mga binabasa and for them to be guided of what they are reading. Okay? So, uh, in uh, 1824, there was already research on persistence of vision of publish. Okay, so uh, dito, th there was a persistence of vision already, wherein uh, all uh, the information could be visualized in an illustration, and uh, of course, dito na nagkaroon ng mga images and pictures, wherein itong images and pictures, ito yung simula ng pag-create uh, ng mga visual aids yung mga pinapanood, yung mga pictures, yung mga, of course, yung parang pag-store ng information gamit ng mga videos. Okay, ito nagsimula lahat. 
and uh, during 1830s there was uh, it was the first viable design for a digital computer and uh, Augusta Lady Byron writes the world's first computer programs so uh, imagine it was already the first computer and uh, during that time a computer kasi uh, is uh, of course parang kung iniibig na kapag inisip natin yung computer ang uh, di pa ang naisip natin we are referring to our laptops but during those times ang computer kasi isa siyang nakalaking parang parang classroom okay it computes everything it computes it collects all the, the data na nag store na itong computer to nag store ng data and since it is nag store siya ng data it stores information and uh, during the 1837 it was the invention of the telegraphs in great britain and the united states so Ano ba itong telegraph na to? Ang telegraph na to is used to communicate uh, messages. Di ba? Uh, parang gumagamit sila ng tinatawag na Morse code. Itong Morse code na to, parang uh, it's a data uh, in sending uh, messages sa mga malalayang lugar. So, itong uh, telegraph na to, di ba, from the word, uh, from the word self, telegraph. So, it graphs uh, data na itong Morse code, na itong data na to, it could be transmitted in, uh, it could be trans, uh, transferred to other devices para mabasa din ng mga ibang tao. And it was the first, uh, this was the establishment of, uh, of course, the invention of the telephones. Di ba? And uh, from the these, during 1861, motion pictures were projected on screen already. So, dito na yung maari ng mapanood, yung mga uh, images, yung mga pictures. Kasi nga, uh, as time passed by, uh, inventions of people before is developing and innovating. Okay? So, uh, of course, during that time, Dito na din nagkaroon ng kintaw nating Dewey Decimal Classification or Dewey Decimal System. So, itong Dewey Decimal System na to, it was already, it is applicable uh, in, uh, of course, finding relevant information inside a library. So, uh, kung titignan nyo, kung pupunta ka sa library, may mga Dewey Decimal Classifications doon. So, kapag kalimbawa, uh, may mga may mga sections doon per cabinet na may mga numbers okay one uh, from 00 to 100 kapag 00 to 100 it is general work okay next kapag 100 naman it has something to do with philosophy and psychology kapag 200 it has something to do with religion and mythology and so on and so forth so kung kung gusto mong makahanap ng information about science and mathematics Kung during those time, during kapag ka, yeah, of course, kung pupunta ka sa library, of course, pumunta ka sa section ng, ng 500 para doon mo makita yung hinahanap mong article, okay, about science and technology. And that is, and that is how do we decimal classification work, okay? So, uh, of course, uh, during that time, since na-introduced na yung mo motion pictures, Edward Mudge Bridge, the man demonstrated already the high speed photograph and these high speed photographs already an uh, a breakthrough of the development of the television and these television contains data and as i mentioned if there is a data there is an information okay so and of course during 1899 it was the f invention of the first magnetic recording uh magnetic recording so this magnetic recording already uh, recording or voice calls yes of course yung pag-establish ng voice ng mga sounds is already uh, parang useful because of course yung mga sinasabi mo is pwedeng nag nag nagbibigay ng information na kapag nagsabi ka ng information uh, of course it could be stored and it could be recorded and kapag na-record siya, of course, 
uh, it could be uh, pwedeng balikan or pwedeng i-store. Okay. So next, so Lee De Forest invented the first uh, ever electronic amplifying tube uh, in 1906. So uh, this is a triad parang it, this is a triad called Odeon at a meeting. So despite having of course despite having the invention of the first triad which served as amplifying devices uh, this was the establishment uh, already of the phase of the of the broadcasting industry. So parang it was used in order to transmit information through broadcasting. Parang dito na nagkaroon ng radio. Diba? Radio broadcasting. We're in na-amplify yung mga uh, of course yung mga data and this turns to an information it, it it could be transmitted to different devices na parang dito na na-establish yung broadcasting industry diba dito nag uh, nag-emerge yung newscasting diba yung radio broadcasting so kapag nag-broadcast ka you transmit information you uh, you send information to a lot of and from the broadcasting industry, of course, dito na din nag-create or nag-start yung television camera tube. Okay? So, itong television camera tube, it was already, during those times, during that time, of course, <coughs> it was used for entertainment. Diba? And since, pwedeng mag-store ng data dito, of course, uh, yung mga videos, yung mga, yung mga videos, yung mga uh, audio recording devices could be stored already and uh, pwede nang uh, ma-store yung information. Okay? So, of course, during that time, in in 1926, it was the first practical sound movie. And uh, in 1939, it, it was uh, a regularly scheduled television broadcasting uh, in uh, initiation or it begins the television broadcasting in the United States since meron ng mga po, meron ng mga po, po, parang motion pictures meron din ng mga sounds di ba? meron din broadcasting industry so itong, itong mga three uh, three essential uh, materials that they was used in order to make a television broadcasting. Diba? So, since nagkaroon ng television broadcasting, of course, it was uh, already uh, the emergence of, of course, it, it began the information dissemination that aids people to be informed of what is happening to their community. And in 1940s, it was the beginning of the information science as discipline. So, ano nga ba itong tawag natin information science? So, itong information science, of course, it was the, the dissemination of information about science already, about uh, the information behind science and how uh, our natural environment uh, behaves during that time. And uh, in 1945, uh, Vannevar Bush pursued the invention of the hypertext. So, itong hypertext na to, it was uh, already a breakthrough of the inter, uh, the, of course, the breakthrough of the intercommunications. Parang it, it begins the initiation or it already uh, amplify the discovery, the inventions of the internet, okay, or the World Wide Web. And uh, dito na, of course, dito na nagkaroon ng computer. And this computer, with the, with the help of internet, it already stores a lot of data, a lot of information. And uh, dito na, nag, of course, uh, nag-birth yung field of information theory wherein as I've mentioned 
dito na nakokolek yung mga data, dito na nakokolek yung information, that this information is very useful uh, in understanding our community or our society. So, in 1960, uh, the Library of Congress developed the LC Mark. So, itong LC Mark nito, uh, it is a machine readable cataloging record wherein it is very useful in organizing every um, every books uh, na matatagpuan sa isang library. Kasi, uh, since sa dami ng mga libro na, na ilagay sa library, uh, of course, it is really hard for you to find uh, those books. Now, nag-device sila ng technology wherein uh, uh, nag-create sila ng machine that actually reads uh, a card catalog. Wherein dito sa card catalog na ito, doon makikita kung saan makakatakuan yung mga uh, libro na hahanapin mo. Okay? On 1969, the Unix operating system was already developed and itong operating system na to na integrate na siya sa mga computer wherein it could handle multitasking already. So, pwede yung isang uh, segment or section ng inyong tab is for calculation and for yung isa naman is pwede for data and grouping. Okay? So, you are able to multitask already using this operating system. Now, of course, in 1971, uh, the first microprocessor chip was already in to introduce. Okay, so uh, this microprocessor microprocessor chip was utilized by computers in order to process data, and of course, uh, it is very useful in organizing in handling uh, data processes inside a computer. And in 1972, optical laser disc was developed by Philips and uh, MCA. Okay, alam niyo yung disc, okay, ito yung bala na tinatawag. Uh, during our time, this disc in stores uh, videos, music, uh, documents that are actually necessary uh, in, in, for, in storing relevant data. Now, this relevant data, uh, <coughs> If you want to retrieve this data, pwede kang gumamit ng ganitong device or the DVD player or the VCD player in order to view those data. Uh, actually, dun sa mga laptop before, uh, yung mga laptop may mga compact disc, yung mga, yan. Yung mga compact disc na yan, pwede lagyan ng ganitong uh, laser disc, in, where in, pwede mong ma-view na yung data. Now, uh, Na ngayon, yung ganong technology is na-transfer na siya using the flash drive, di ba? Na yung flash drive, ilalagay mo lang siya sa may USB port, pwede mo nang ma-view yung data mo. And uh, during before, laser disc ang ginagamit. Okay? So, in 1974, the MCA and Philips agreed on a standard video disc encoding format. So, ito na. Dito na nagkaroon ng sound system. And of course, na-integrate na dito yung radio. radio. Uh, of course, yung... Of course, yung pag uh, yung paggamit ng radio, it uh, it actually uh, boost for the broadcasting industry during that time. Okay, and uh, uh, in 1975, Altair uh, microcomputer kit was released. It was the first personal computer for the public. So, ito yung Altair. Ito yung computer before. Parang it's uh, a CPU na pwede mong i-connect yung iyong uh, yung mga ibang devices wherein it processed already data. Okay? So, uh, in 1984, Apple na Macintosh computer was already introduced. Okay? Dito na nag-introduce ang Apple industry wherein uh, ito na yung uh, computer nila. Okay? Ito na yung first computer nila. And in mid-1980s, artificial intelligence was separated from the information Science. So during those times, there was already there were already uh, the creation of the artificial intelligence, and it was not that really uh, nito, hindi siya masyadong sikat, but generally it uh, is very useful those during that time. Okay, so in 1987, in 1987, HyperCard was developed by Bill Atkinson. Uh, receive box metaphor and ito yun. 
parang it's a window dialogue na maaring uh, dun mo ma-process or dun mo makikita yung mga commands ng isang computer already. Okay? And uh, in 1991, 400, 450 complete works of literature on one cd was released. Okay? So, ito yon. Itong cd na to, it actually, uh, tawag nito, stores data. Alam niyo yung uh, H -H HHD drive or the SSD drive, yan yung itumbas niya na it stores data. Di ba? Uh, HH, if I'm not mistaken, or HDD drive. Basta yung mga drive, uh, system, yung mga drivers, computers natin, okay? Na nag store ng data. Okay? Yan ang katulad niyan. Okay, so next, uh, on January 1997, RSA or the Encryption and Network Security Software was introduced already. So, Internet Security Code cracked for a 48-bit number. So, parang dito na mismo na, na introduced yung uh, encryption of data for network security. Kasi, of course, uh, during those time, ang mga information kasi, kasi it is parang uh, vulnerable siya. And since this is vulnerable sa lahat, lahat ng data na kay-store doon, pwede man ako ng iba. Pwede mag-encrypt ng, ng uh, data by using password already. Okay? And of course, using security software. Uh, parang nabablock na yung mga mild, malwares, nabablock na yung mga viruses na maaaring mag-corrupt uh, sa mga data during that time. Okay? As man evolved, information and its dissemination has already or has evolved in many ways so of course with with the information we have of course this information uh, contains knowledge and this knowledge is very useful in uh, of course practicing such skills and these skills is useful for the survival of the humanity diba? and now Due to the abundance of information, it was difficult to collect and manage them starting in 1960 and 1970s. Imagine, how will you able to, uh, kung halimbawa, if you have a lots of information, diba? how will you able to organize these? Sa isang research nga, hindi mo pwedeng, uh, hindi mo pwedeng uh, ilagay lang sa isang paragraph yung lahat ng information. It was divided into different sections. Introduction, methodology, uh, review of related literature. Kasi it is really uh, hard for you to identify what kind of information is relevant uh, to what you are looking for. Diba? So, in 1980s, Richard Werman called it is the information anxiety. So, since you're already uh, bombarded, bombarded with uh, a lot of information, so of course, it is really hard for you to organize these things. Kaya, nagkakaroon na tayong tinatawag na information anxiety. It could be, it could lead to, of course, uh, depression. And of course, uh, since kapag ka, you're already informed, di ba yung ibang tao, kapag, kapag nagre-review ka ng lessons mo, Diba? If you are reviewing your lessons and you are about to take your examination, diba? if hindi na organize yung information mo, is yung information sa utak mo is maari kang ma-block, ma-blank. Okay? Ganyan ang mga nangyayari sa mga ibang students. Okay? So, in, 19, in 1990s, information became the currency in the business world. So, uh, this information uh, uh, provided an income uh, in the business world. But, of course, uh, this information was used for, uh, of course, uh, parang dito nag-boom yung mga messaging app, di ba? Dito nag-boom yung mga text, mga text messages. So, uh, yung mga text messages, it requires uh, money. Okay? For you to send information, kailangan mong gumasto, di ba? So, it, uh, it, has also, it has something to do with, uh, it was a preferred medium of exchange. And information managers served as information officers during that time. Kasi, Paano nga ba na nakakommunicate ang information before? Ang information before is, yes, na ilalagay siya sa letter and uh, kung magpapatala ka ng information from here, 
or halimbawa yung mga relatives kasi ibang bansa, magpapanala ka ng letter, it takes a lot of time, but now, it, for just, for a span of uh, one second, hindi pa ata na, hindi pa nga mag one second, pwede ka na mag-send ng information to your documents, di ba? And, uh, in the present generation, there is no doubt that the information has turned out to be a commodity an overdeveloped product or mass-produced and uh, unspecialized. So, uh, this, uh, tawag nito, this information, di ba? A lot of information is already present in the internet right now. Lahat actually, including your, uh, including your data, your personal data, yung name mo, yung address mo, age, Na, nasa lahat na, in, nasa internet na lahat yan and uh, with all this information present in the internet uh, soon we became overloaded with it di ba? so uh, with that uh, kapag overloaded na tayo ng mga information ano mangyayari? parang it is really hard for us to organize the things it is really hard for us to identify whether these informations are fact or uh, tawag nito, fake diba? katulad na nga lang ng pag-identify ng mga news sa, sa mga social media accounts natin mari itong mga news na to it could be uh, a biased news it could be a fake news or it could be uh, uh, a legit news uh, news or yes uh, a true or fact news diba? now let's talk about the truth of the information aids. so uh, these are some truths of the information age so information must complete okay so why do we come why do we need complete information of course to uh, prevent uh, doubts okay to prevent misunderstanding Kasi kapag halimbawa yung information mo is, like for example, sa pagbabalita, if you inform the public uh, na may bagyo, okay, yun lang ang sinabi mo na may bagyo, okay, yung broadcast uh, na may bagyo, tapos hindi mo sinabi kung saan at kailan, kailan uh, magla-land for yung bagyo, of course, it could actually create a chaos or tawag nito, question mark to... Uh, to the minds of the people in the community, okay? Uh, next is, newer is equated to the truer. So, kung ano yung, uh, kung ano yung trend, okay? Kung, kung ano yung bago, yun yung mga totoo na nangyayari. Because it is, uh, tawag nito, it is timely and it is relevant to the needs of the people of the community. Hindi naman pwedeng kung ano yung dati na pinapaniwalaan or kung ano yung dati, katulad ng paradigm shift, di ba? Uh, information uh, changes over time and uh, with how people deal with uh, their daily uh, activity and of course their daily needs uh, nag-iiba yung mga panlasa or nag-iiba yung mga perspective or yung mga uh, activities na nangyayas sa mga tao and as time passed by these informations are this, these activities could affect uh, the info, the present information in uh, the whole world. Kung, kung halimbawa, dati, may information na uh, parang eight, 7 out of 10 ang positive sa HIV during year 2000, pwede mag yan sa panahon natin ngayon na ang mga positive sa HIV is uh, parang 9 of, or 9 out of 10 is positive sa HIV. Parang ganun. Kung ano yung uh, bago, yun yung totoo. Okay. Next is, of course, the selection in a viewpoint. Okay. So, it's really hard for us to identify whether an, inf an information is true. So, we must always uh, scrutinize. Okay. We must look into different angles in order for us to assess if these informations are true or not. Okay. The media sells what the culture buy. Of course, that's true. Kung ano yung trends, kung ano yung uh, kung ano yung bago, kung ano yung gusto ng masa, yun yung gustong binibigay ng media. Just like what uh, what uh, is happening to our social media right now, di ba? So, yung ating social media is, kung halimbawa, nag-search ka dun sa Facebook mo ng bag, okay? 
now uh, or nag-search ka sa Shopee ng bag. Now itong bag na to, yung data or yung algorithm na nag-search ka ng bag sa Shopee is matatransfer siya sa Facebook kasi di ba nakasynchronize yung data mo doon. Now, uh, as time pass by, mao-observe mo na lang sa mga advertisements sa yung social media account, may mga bag na nagpapakita na advertisement. Now, meaning to say, media sells what uh, what the persons buy or tawag na ito, it actually, it has something to do with parang calculating what uh, is your priorities in life, di ba? So that information, that is how technology or that is how information works. So uh, next is the early word get the pearl. Yes, that is true. Because uh, these words or these uh, Di ba? Kaya nga tawag din, meron tayong mga nagbabagang balita kung ano yung bago, di ba? Kung ano yung bago, yun yung mga totoong mga information, di ba? You are what you eat and uh, and so what and so is your brain. So, that is true. Kung ano yung mga uh, pinapaloob mo sa sarili mo, kung ano yung mga uh, pinaniniwalaan mo sa, sa parang uh, pinaniniwalaan mo dito sa mundo, yun yung magiging actions mo. Kung naniniwala kang halimbawa, Uh, kung naniniwala kang nakapag, uh, nakakatalino ang pagre-review, of course, nag-review ka. So, nag-aral ka ng mabuti. And of course, ang magiging result nito is magiging matalino ka. You will perfect your exams. Okay? So, parang ganun. Ganun ang mangyayari. So, kung halimbawa, kung puro ka luod ng uh, videos sa YouTube na irrelevant sa iyong lesson, of course, ano mangyayari? Ano mangyayari sa iyo? Of course, magiging mababang scores mo dahil hindi ka naman nag-aral. Okay? Anything in great demands will be counterfeited. And uh, this could be knowledge, scandals, secret, and it could be fabricated. And that is true. Diba? Itong mga to, it could, knowledge, scandals, and secrets could be uh, ma-uncover yung mga yan. Ma-unfold yung mga yan. Dahil sa information. Diba? Diba? Any cues na maaaring statement sa internet, it could lead to curiosity. Di ba kung kapag naglabas lang ng issue ang isang artista regarding uh, sa, sa pag pa, sa uh, ito, sa breakups with their uh, with their loved ones, parang ganun. Like for example, yung uh, relevant ngayon na about sa yung issue about kay Andrea Brillantes and uh, tawag nito kay uh, Daniel Padilla uh, maaaring ma-unfold yan because nag-release sila ng statement regarding that nag-release sila ng statement na nag uh, nagbibigay ng clue or curiosity sa mga tao so and of course ideas are seen as controversial that is true di ba? if you release ideas okay nagbigay ka lang uh, ng information like uh, katulad ng nangyayari kay uh, Rendon Labrador, di ba? Labrador if I'm not mistaken. So nag-i-state siya, parang yung mga sinasabi niya tungkol sa kanyang mga views regarding sa internet is it's parang it's It's his perspective. And parang yung idea niya ngayon is nagiging controversial kasi yung delivery ng kanyang pagbibigay ng idea is parang uh, tab, parang ganun. Or parang hindi siya acceptable to the majority of the people. Di ba? So it is controversial. So, so uh, of course, undead information walk even. Even. So, ito na yung mga rumors, lies, disinformation, and gossips. And it, it, it never died down. Di ba? Ang information, yung chismis na sinasabi natin, di ba? It is an information. So, hindi yan namamatay. So, media, pres media presence creates, media presence creates the story. It creates the story of everything. Di ba? Katulad ng pagmamay day mo. Nag my day ka last year, Anong ginawa mo last year? Since gumamit ka ng media, nakikita mo yung parang story of how your life or how your life improves as time uh, goes by. Diba? 
So next is the medium selects the message and of course the whole truth is uh, a person. Diba? So that's the truth about the information age. Now let's talk about computers. Diba? Computers are very useful nowadays. Computers are among of the most important contributions of the advances of the information age to the society. Now the question is, how do you obtain information from the internet? Diba? You use computers. Diba? It is an electronic device that stores and processes data or the information. Katulad niya sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina, when we say data, it pertains to information. Diba? It runs a program that contains the exact and step-by-step -step directions to solve a problem. And that is uh, an attribute of the computer. And we have here personal computer. When we say personal computer, it is a single user in instrument and it is first known as microcomputer since they were, in, they were a complete computer but built on smaller scale. And that is the PC. Diba? So, kung pupunta kayo dati sa mga internet shops, di ba? Meron tayong PC na sila. PC1, PC2, PC3, mga ganun. Okay, kung uh, mag-rent ka ng computer, go to yung PC4 because that is the personal computer. Now, uh, we have desktop computer. So, PC that, when we say P, desktop computer, PC, it is PC that is not designed for portability. Okay, so, when we say uh, portability kasi, it actually, kapag kasi portable, you are a, uh, kapag kasi portable ng bagay, you can use it anywhere else. Parang ganun. Pwede mo siyang madala kahit saan ka magpunta. Uh, and uh, parang from the world is a, parang, uh, parang it gives you comfort in using that particular uh, device or material. Okay? It is a desk and desktop can be set up in a permanent spot. So, hindi mo pa siya pwedeng ilipat-lipat. Katulad ng mga laptop built ng mga cell phone, di ba? Has a power of powerful processor and additional memory and enhances capabilities for performing a special group. That is desktop computer. And also, we have laptops. It is a portable computer that integrates the essential of the computer, of desktop computers in a battery-powered package already. And this is very useful nowadays. Laptops are very useful nowadays because you can carry it anywhere else, di ba? Kahit sa mall, kahit sa canteen, kahit, kahit sa... Saan ka magpunta? Nakaride ka sa cars, di ba? Pwede mong gamitin ay yung laptop, okay? Because you can just play, you can actually uh, place it on your lap. Kaya nga sinabi natin yung laptop, di ba? Pwede mong ilalagay, pwede mong ilagay sa inyong lap. At least, uh, pwede mong siyang magamit, ah, uh, anytime, anywhere, okay? We also have personal digital assistance or the PDAs. It is tightly integrated, compu integrated computers that usually have no keyboards but rely on touch screen. So that is personal digital assistance. So patulad ng parang uh, pwede natin may ikumparang personal digital assistance sa mga assisted balls or yung mga assisted touch natin sa mga sa mga tawag nito, sa mga uh, sa ating mga tag dito sa ating mga uh, cell phones di ba may mga assistant balls doon and they are personal assistants that assist you kung ano yung pwede mong gawin and also we have server server refers to the computer that has been improved to provide network services to other computer and boast powerful processor tons of memory and large hard drive so Yes, sir, that, that, that is a server. So, it provides network services to other computers. So, if you need uh, internet connection, okay, uh, you need a server, okay? You need a server, and it, this server provides you a lot of information. Kasi itong laptop natin, kumbaga, it stores uh, a limited data, limited information. Now, for you to be able to gain access to Google or other browser, you need uh, an internet connection and itong internet connection na to is parang it's it's uh, a vector or it's uh, a connection para makapunta ka or makakuha ka ng data coming from the server o diba? ang server kasi natin it actually uh, tawag nito it 
contains tons of information and uh, itong information na ta useful for you to uh, retrieve any kind of data. Diba? Next, we also have mainframes. It is huge computer system that can fill up the entire room. They, they are used especially by large film firms to describe the large expensive machines that process millions of transactions every day. So, itong mga ganitong klase ng computer, it is utilized sa mga kompanya. Like for example, the, the NASA. Okay, sa NASA kasi kailangan nila ng ganitong klase ng computer para at least uh, makaprocess sila ng information sa mas mabilis na paraan. Hindi pwedeng magsisend sila ng data sa outer space dun sa ISS, sa International Space Station, and then hindi pwedeng mabagal yung pag-send or pag transmit ng data kasi uh, maraming oras ang nasasaya. And uh, yung pag-transmit ng data, it cost a lot of money. Okay? And of course, we have the wearable computers. It involves material that are usually integrated into cell phones, watches, and other small objects or places. Katulad ng mga uh, Apple watches din yun. Diba? Yung mga Android watches. It has something to do with it parang integrate, na-integrate na, na doon yung, yung mga programs na meron sa inyong mga cell phones. Diba? It performs com common computer applications, databases, and emails, and other multimedia, like for example, uh, multimedia activity like for example, gallery, camera, messaging app, calls, and other and other uh, and other multimedia platforms, diba? Next, we also have the World Wide Web. So, when you say World Wide Web, it has something to do with internet connectivity, okay? So, uh, it is the origin of the internet. Kung, ma kung makapansin nyo, lahat ng mga domains na pinupuntahan natin, like for example, Facebook, we have www kapag ka YouTube www World Wide Web. So, uh, si Cloud Shannon, he he was one that introduced the internet, and he is American mathematician, the father of information theory, and worked as uh, at Bell Laboratories and published a paper proposing that information can be quantitatively encoded as a sequence of one and zeros, diba? So if you are able to, if you will be, if you will be decoding information sa computer programming, ang 101010, it has a lot of, tawag nito, uh, meaning, okay? Kasi this 101010 na to, it encodes for something else, okay? Kasi hindi pwedeng uh, mag-transmit ng data gamit ang, mga, ang alphabet, mahirap. So, for you to be... For, for you to obtain data, of course, kailangan mo ng parang transcription devices. Itong transcription devices na ito, na naka-encode sa 1010, or yes, the sequence of 1 uh, and zeros is very useful in, for, in order for you to retrieve data. Okay? So, dito naman na, uh, Internet is a worldwide system of interconnected network that facilitates data transmission. So, yes, di ba, as I mentioned earlier, for you to, for you to obtain uh, uh, data from the server, kailangan mo ng internet. It was developed during 1970s by the Department of the Defense. It is mainly used by scientists to communicate with other scientists and remained under government control in 1984. Imagine. So that is internet. So it has something... Uh, uh, during, during the creation of internet, one of the problem was the speed. Masyadong mabagal. Okay? And phone lines could only transmit information at limited rate. So, konti lang yung pwede mong may transmit. So, ang ginagamit nila is yung Morse code na lang. Okay? Yung Morse code, unlike ngayon, na meron tayong mga fiber optics, meron tayong mga wireless uh, fidelity or Wi-Fi, di ba? So, fiber optics cables allowed for billions of bits of information to be received every minute. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, may mga, yung mga kable na mga kuryente dyan, may mga fiber optics yung mga yun, and these fiber optics are useful in transmitting data na mapupunta sa inyong laptop, di ba? And of course, Intel developed fastest microprocessor. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, nag-start tayo sa maliliit. Okay, next kapag di ba ang mga in, ang mga microprocessor ang mga processor before next start Intel Pentium, Intel Celeron, Intel uh, tapos yes, yung mga yan. Uh, nag, tapos nag Windows yes, nag Intel uh, 
Core i3, Core i3, then Core Intel Core i5, then Intel Core i7. Tapos may mga generations pa yung mga yan. So they are able to actually uh, develop and innovate their technology in order to uh, actually this in order to uh, address the needs of the society. Okay, so Serge Brin and Larry Page. Larry Page was director of the Stanford Research Project, and they built a search engine that listed results to reflect page popularity when they did when they determined that the most popular suit would frequently be used, most usable. So $1 billion investment from friends and family was uh, was used and it was launched uh, and launched their company in 1989. So, uh, sila ang mga pangunahing tao nag-create nag ng Google. And Google is now the world's most popular search engine, accepting more than 20 million queries daily. So that is, they are, uh, they are the ones kung bakit natin na access, they are the one responsible kung bakit natin na access yung mga information. Di ba kung dati, uh, ang information about uh, the uh, pinapahanap yung yung professor nam before pinapahanap kami ng word or de description or definition ng a particular word sa library ang hirap hirap namin mahanap sa library almost one and a half hour para lang mahanapan yung word na yun but for now dahil sa Google we are able to access it in just span uh, in just short period of time and uh, of course uh, dito na nagboom yung electronic pa eh? And um, of course, the America Online and Computer Survey. And dito na nagkaroon ng uh, Microsoft na inintroduce ni Steve Bill Gates. We have Steve Jobs, which is in Apple. And of course, Mark Zuckerberg, which is the Facebook. Kung, kung hindi dahil sa Google, of course, hindi din may introduce itong mga uh, itong mga company na ito na nagka-create which is very uh, nito, which is sikat sa, pang, sa mga panahon natin yun. so these are some issues on the world wide web so critics charge that the internet created technological divide that increased the gaps between higher class and the lower class society so kung halimbawa you're able to access internet using your laptop meaning to say you're um, mayaman ka Diba? You are able to afford these things. Pero kapag hindi mo ma-afford yung ganitong bagay, umaasa ka lang sa libro, wala kang cellphone, wala kang internet, of course, parang uh, you are unfortunate or you are poor. Diba? So that is, uh, those are just examples of issues concerning the world wide web. And of course, the unregulated and loose nature of the internet allowed pornography to be broadcast to millions of homes. Diba? Ang pornography right now, ang dami yung mga websites ng mga pornography. And it, these uh, websites could be accessible uh, to each individual. Diba? It is unregulated. Kaya, nakakatakot din minsan. Next is the cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is an issue that causes alarm worldwide. O, diba? Bashing. Yung mga yan. Yung bashing. Like, post ka lang ng picture mo, tapos parang meron ka lang people doon. Yun na. Yun na yung cause kung bakit binabash ka ng, ng tao. Kasi nakikita-kita yan sa social media. Diba? Cyberbullying. Next, we also have uh, although maraming mga issues concerning the uh, use of the World Wide Web or the Internet, application of computers in science and research is one of the positive effects. One is the bioinformatics, of course. Bioinforma bioinformatics is the application of the information technology to store, organize, and analyze the vast 
amount of biological data which is available in the form of sequences and the structure proteins or yung tinatawag nating uh yung tinatawag nating mga gene markers so it is building blocks of organisms and nucleic acid uh, which is the information carrier for each or organisms so sa internet kasi merong website to on which is the NCBI or the National Center for Biotechnology Information and it stores data about uh, the genome of each organisms so if you wanted to look for your in, if you wanted to look for a data uh, sequences for a, a specific organism pwede mong gamitin yung yung data na yon and it could be used for you to compare kung may mga halimbawa na tagpuan kang uh, bagong species at pwede mong i-compare yon sa mga dati ng existing species kung relate ba magka-relate ba sila or hindi o, diba? so that is one positive uh, inputs of the uh, World Wide Web or the Internet. Next, establishment of bioinformatics. Of course, it is the uh, bioinformatics was established because of the need to create a databases of the biological sequences. Imagine the world uh, that uh, the world contains a lot of organisms, and it is hard for us to store this or uh, information. Kung sa saan ba natin pwede store? Okay, pwede natin is historian, hindi, pwede, hindi naman natin yung historian kung saan-saan lang. So, kailangan meron tayong database. Human brains cannot store all genetic sequences of the organisms and, and this huge amount of data can only be stored, analyzed, and be used efficiently with the use of computers. That is true, di ba? It may uh, store in your long-term memory, but it cannot be stored uh, over time. Now, uh, ang mas magawang mas maganda gawin mo is of course uh, to store this using the computer. Okay, so at least if kapag in-store mo siya using computer, you can retrieve it anytime, anywhere, di ba? And also we have the Swiss Prot Protein Sequences database. So it is consolidated formal database. It was initiated uh, in 1986 and it is now about 70 thousand protein sequences and more than five thousand model organisms that is swiss prot protein uh, sequence database so if uh, you wanted to look for a gene marker and gene marker uh, is also protein now pwede mo siyang puntahan dito sa swiss prot protein sequence database okay uh, of course the enormous variety of divergent data resources is now available to for study and research for both academic institutions and industries. So available as public domains information through the NCBI. And of course, the cd rooms available uh, for requested uh, at this website, the www.rcsb.organization. So if you want to uh, look for an information about our organizations, pwede mong gamitin or pwede kang pumunta sa mga website na ito. Okay? So, now, let's move on to the application of computers and software tools. Okay? First, for generating databases. At tulad ng sinabi ko nina, we can generate databases using computers. And of course, identifying the functions of proteins. Uh, of course, each of the proteins, di ba, sa dami ba naman ng proteins na meron tayo sa katawan natin? And uh, of course, the protein na present sa mga ibang animals and organisms, we really cannot uh, organize these things. Of course, we really, it's hard for us to identify by these things now it should be stored in a database and of course modeling the structure of protein and of course determining the coding useful regions of nucleic acid or you can talk that gene marker okay and of course finding suitable drug compounds from a large pool and of course uh, it optimizing the drug development process by predicting possible targets okay that is the application of the computers so uh, now we also have here the software tools which are handy in analysis. So we have the BLAST. Okay? Itong BLAST na to, if you wanted to compare uh, data sequences in, uh, inter dif by, uh, with different organisms, you can use the BLAST. Okay? Itong BLAST na to is makikita dun sa, uh, sa, sa internet na pwede mang pag-compare yung data ng iba't ibang klase ng organisms. We also have annotator. It is, an, it is an interactive genome analysis tool. So, 
uh, if you want to analyze a genome of an, a specific organism, you can use the annotator. And of course, the gene finder. Kung meron kang halimbawa, uh, meron kang DNA sequences, okay, nag, nagpa-extract ka ng data, hindi mo alam kung anong klaseng uh, gene yung, yung nakuha doon, pwede mong gamitin yung gene finder in order to identify the coding region and splash sites of that particular gene. Okay? So, uh, we also have here the Human Genome Project. So, ano nga ba ang Human Genome Project? Uh, it was initiated in 1988 and it has now been stored as primary information source for future application of medicine. So, it's our Human Genome Project. Project. It is a, uh, a database of all uh, the genomes na meron sa is Yes, the genome na meron sa humans. Okay? The available data is so huge that, it's, that, it, that if compiled in books, the data would run into 200 volume of 1,000 pages each and reading alone. O, di ba? Kapag ka, sa, sa, sa dami pa naman ng information na yun, will you able to read it? Baka, kaila, baka mo, kailangan mo ng time. Baka kailangan mo ng, ng panahon. Baka actually four years, five years mo yung babasahin, okay? So, kailangan talaga ng human genome project. So, five million human beings or two individual different different in three million bases uh, is equal to five, uh, 15 million or 15 billion entries uh, which is present in the genomic sequence difference database, okay? So, this is the human genome project. So we have here the Human Genome Project and the present challenge to handle such huge volume of data is to improve database design, develop software for data-based access, and of course the manipulation and device data entry procedures to compensate the varied computer procedure and system used in different laboratories. So this is very useful for uh, research and uh, uh, development of medicines. So, bioinformatics in pharmaceutical industry is uh, key for rational drug discovery and it reduces the trials in the screening of drugs compound. Because if we try, if since all are already stored in the human genome products or the bioinformatics, it could easily be compared kung may mga differences, di ba? Kung may mga differences sa mga results uh, na, na, na natagpuan or na-find uh, during the clinical trials. So, and identifying the potential drug targets for a partic particular disease using high-power computing power stations and software like Insight was already used. And of course, we have the pharmacogenic pharmacogenomics. It is a potential target for drugs development that are uh, hypothesized from the genome sequences, diba? And it is used sa ating uh, sa pagdiscover ng drug ng uh, nito. It was used in order to, of course, uh, resolve the issues concerning yung drugs sa ating uh, COVID. 19. Okay. And next, we have here the plant biotechno biotechnology. Bioinformatics is found to be useful in the areas of identifying diseases, resistant genes, and designing plants with high nutritive value. And it is very useful. Diba? Iko compare mo lang yung mga natagpuan mo, mga yung mga plants na nakita mo. Like, for example, kung napunta ka dun sa, uh, sa forest, and that forest uh, nag, naghanap ka ng species doon na nagkaroon ka ng kan, nag, kan, nag, nagkanta ka ng farm ng phytochemical analysis and uh, nagkanta ka ng course na in-extract mo yung genes niya nagpa, nagpa sequence ka ng uh, nagpa DNA sequence ka and uh, binigay siya yung sequences pwede mong gamitin ang bioinformatics for you to compare uh, of course uh, these plants and of course the disease resistant genes present in these plants okay now let's move on to how to check the reliability of the web sources so this is very useful because uh, 
panahon natin ngayon, may mga sa dami ng mga ng mga websites, hindi na natin alam kung kung ano ang legit or kung ano ang fake. Okay? Uh, of course, uh, these are some questions that need to be answered. Oh, first is who is the author of the article? Okay? Of course, kailangan mong tingnan yung credentials, yung expertise, yung education, yung experience, and of course, affiliation. Of course, kapag itong mga to is uh, credit credible like for example they are from universities they are from laboratory uh, industries it could be a legit website okay next who published the site so sino nga ba yung mga uh, publish so of course the website domain the reputable organization and of course the suffix in the domain name so uh, yes may mga website domain tayo and hindi yan basta basta uh, yes yung website domain pwedeng ma-alter kasi pwedeng uh, ang website domain kasi pwedeng uh, pwedeng uh, bilhin okay and of course repute is it a reputable organization hindi ba siya pre, hindi ba siya parang nag uh, nag uh, parang nag fishing lang or nag tawag dito mga nagnanakaw ng iyong personal data and of course it should have a suffix uh, na merong edu.com ml or gov or organization kapag may mga ganyan meaning to say that is a legit site Okay, so what is the main purpose of the site? So, ano nga ba yung main purpose? Is it to sell products? Like, for example, Lazada, Shopee, or Personal Happy. Ano, mga blog pa yung mga yan? Is it blog? Uh, video blog? Is it a public service? Of course. Is it a scholarship uh, website na nagbibigyan ng mga scholarship grants? Is it for general information? Or is it for opinion? Diba? So, ano nga ba yung purpose ng site na yun? To give opinion? to give general information, is it fact or unbed? So, ano nga ba yung mga intended audience? Of course, kapag pwedeng uh, general public for general information, each group for a certain blog, of course, people from a particular geographical area, like for example, nagbabalita ka tungkol sa sa typhoons or disaster ng Pilipinas, binabalita mo siya sa India, hindi naman siya applicable. So, it should be designed for a particular geographical area. Okay? And of course, members of a particular profession or with a specific training. So, dapat nakadesign yung website sa so specific uh, or sa, sa, sa mga tao na design na manood ng mga ganun. Like for example, uh, if they are uh, educated person, professionals, of course, uh, these, uh, pwede nyo yung, yung mga articles doon, it, it is scholarly uh, ref, reviewed by referred, uh, tawag nito, referred reviewers okay, or editors. Next, what is the quality of the information provided in the website? Of course, of course uh, yung mga yung timelines nila, pwede nyo tignan kung kailan ba sila na create and of course, uh, credible ba yung parang nagmatagal na ba sila? wala ba sila, wala bang mga bashing na nangyayari wala bang back, wala bang mga uh, nagsasabing yung website nila is nagbibigay ng mga maling information okay of course site sources so kapag yung mga uh, yung yung website na yun is maraming mga citations means say it is a credible in a credible journal okay and of course reputable site and of course sites links okay so parang Meron tayong mga, di ba, sa journal publication, meron tayong mga indices, okay? Merong mga, mga Scopus Index Journal, pwede naka, naka, indicate lahat doon yung mga indices na pwede mapublish sa mga indices na yun, yung mga articles na in legit, okay? Next, we have different examples of useful and reliable web sources. First, we have the AVA newsletter for Alzheimer Foundation of America newsletter. So, of course, they are designed for Alzheimer, Alzheimer's disease. Okay, that actually res, uh, tagunto, released information about Alzheimer's. Okay. Next, we have here American American Memory, the Library Congress of the Historical Digital Information. So. Of course, it has something to do with uh, historical digital collection of the Americans. Not just Americans, but of course, other uh, Western information. 
Next, we have here the Bartleby, the Bartleby.com. It is great books online. So if you want to read books, you can uh, go to this website. Next, we also have uh, Chronicling America. Search and use pages from American newspapers from 1880 to 1922. Since itong mga to is mm, yung mga uh, articles is pwedeng mag-fade away, nag i lang siya, pwedeng mabasa using the chronicling uh, America. Also, we have here the cyberbullying. Uh, cyberbullying website is a free collection of ebooks from e Ebra Brief, Ebrary, uh, plus additional reports and documents to help better understand, prevent, and take action against this growing concern. So, how do you, how do you handle book cyberbullying? How do you manage cyberbullying? How do you uh, uh, identify cyberbullying? So, pwedeng dito kayo pumunta sa website na ito. Next, we have here drug information website. We have the National Library for Medicine's MedPlus line. We have the drugs.com. We have the PDR Health. So, we, these are information. And of course, we have the Global Gateway, World Culture and Resources. For, of course, it has something to do with culture, arts and other resources that is present about the tradition of a particular uh, community. So we also have the Google Books, diba? Google Books, na if you wanted to look for books or other relevant references about your topic that you are trying to discuss, pwede kayo pumunta dito. Of course, we have here the Google Scholar. Pwede kayo pumunta dito sa publish articles regarding your uh, research works. And of course, we also have the library, uh, the library primary for Congress or of Congress. So, pwede pumunta ka dito for you to find relevant documents. We have the for Fordham University, di ba? It has to do with Internet Modern History Source Book and of course, Teacher Oz Kingdom of the History. And look, we also have Illinois Digital Archive. Okay, we also have the Internet Archive. If you want to look for uh, for data during uh, early 1880s, pwede kayong pumunta dito because nandito lahat yung mga articles. Okay, we also have the Internet Archive for currently di digitalized. Okay, so pwede yan. Next, we also have the, the Librarian Internet Index. If you want to look for trusted documents or issues regarding all uh, books, pwede kayo pumunta dito. And of course, very relevant sa mga nurses. If you want to look for uh, any relevant yes. nursing uh Information, punta kayo dito sa nursing sites such as Agency for Healthcare and Research and Quality. www.ahrq.gov So, next we have here the National Library for Medicine. Itong mga to is uh, very useful sa mga researches ninyo. Sa paggawa ng mga uh, sa pag-assist sa mga literatures and related studies. Okay? We also have here the Project Gothenburg. It's the first largest single collection of free electronic books with currently 60,000 ebooks available. And this is free. Okay? We have here the Schmoops. Okay? Schmoops is literature, U.S. history, and poet information written by from primarily by uh, PhD uh, individuals. Okay? And of course, State Masters. It is a unique statistical database which allows you to research and compare multitude of different data on U.S. state using various primary sources. We also have the, the, the Wesleyan University Philippines Library as your source of information. Okay, legit And that's the end of lecture. And as we end the lecture, I'd like to give you this quote. Getting information from the internet is like taking a drink from a hydrant. Okay? For you to become for you to become not dehydrated, you have to read a lot of information from internet or even uh, in your own books. Okay? 
Thank you very much for listening.